This is a HeadGum Podcast. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for listening to Senior Superlatives. Before we get into this flaming hot, hot episode, I'm here to let you know that me, Greta Teitelman, the world's first and foremost perfect performer of all time, will be coming to Brea, California on September 25th, doing my hour at the Brea Improv. Please get your tickets to that. Also, if you're in Chicago and Pittsburgh, I'm going to be in Chicago at the Color Club on October 13th, and I'm going to be at Bottle Rocket Social Hall, okay, on October 15th. So please come to that. And yeah, let's get into it. Take that look of worry. I'm an ordinary man. They don't tell me nothing. So I find out all I can. There's a fire that's been burning right outside my door. I can't see it, but I feel it, and it helps to keep me warm. So I don't mind, no, I don't mind. Seems so long I've been waiting, still don't know what for. There's no point in escaping. I don't worry anymore. I can't come out to find you. I don't like to go outside. They can't turn off my feelings like they're turning off the light. And that is just a sliver of my spoken word rendition of Take Me Home by Phil Collins. Now you're wondering, what year are we in that we're listening to Phil Collins? Well, I'm here to let you know we are in 1986, y'all. We're in 1986. And a lot of really, really popping shit happened in 1986. First and foremost, mad cow disease was discovered in 1986. Can you believe that? The Space Shuttle Challenger disintegrates in 73 seconds after launch. Um, Oh, I don't know. A little show known as the Oprah Winfrey Show premieres in 1986. Let's not even talk about Haley's Comet. You know how many Haley's I know that are named after Haley's Comet? (laughs) Three. Um, Hands Across America huge inspired the movie us okay for those youngins that don't know what hands across america is or was the phantom of the opera debuts in london's west end and yes half mask we love and we're gonna end with this chernobyl happens in 1986 okay chernobyl you know, it explodes. I'm not going to explain to all of my Gen Zers listening to this podcast what that is, but I would suggest watching the television show, okay? Get into hour-long entertainment. That is what I'm going to say about Starting that. Starting with Chernobyl. Start with Chernobyl. <laughs> it is good. It is good. Now, who were we in 1986? Where were we in 1986? We were in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We're Paul F. Tompkins. Hi. Holy Kaboli Shamoli. <laughs> Greta, you said it. I'm putting my phone on focus mode because, honey, <laughs> I'm, I'm putting myself on focus, focus. mode. Wow. <laughs> what, what what was ha- when when Chernobyl happened? Were you shooketh or did you not know? Well, I mean, I, I because I'm Gen X, I grew up with the the idea that nuclear war could happen at any moment. So Hiding under your desk. Chernobyl was almost, we didn't do that. We didn't do the drills. Oh. But it was just like a thing. It was just like a shrug. Like, yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's probably going to happen. Well, I guess it was like the generation above was doing the drills. Yes, exactly. And then Gen X was not doing the they drills. They were like, let's not bother with the drills. Yeah. They were like, well, <laughs> those people did the drills. Yeah. Nothing happened. We don't need to do the drills. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I feel like the generation below me is, no, I feel like my generation was really resigned to being like, well... <laughs> We're gonna die, I guess. One way or another. Yeah. One way and or now another. I feel like Gen Z is reactivated. Yes, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And um, so when Chernobyl happened, it was almost like uh, you know, with my with my limited brain at the time, mm. it was like, well, this is better than a nuclear warhead coming here. Sure. Like if their own thing is melting down or whatever. At least that's a contained thing in one place right. as opposed to the whole earth being destroyed. Um, so 
I don't know. I guess I was a real class half full guy. <laughs> well, no, you're just like, you're like, well, it's happening there. It's not happening here. I guess that's how, I mean, but then it well, could have been worse. <laughs> what year did Three Mile Island happen? Oh, man. 81, maybe? Because Something I feel like that, like that was kind of close to home. Yeah, for sure. Closer to home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Three Mile Island, for those of you that don't know, is in the Susquehanna River. That's right. Outside of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, yeah. the capital of PA. Yeah. And everyone really thought that Three Mile Island was going to be like the nuclear kind of oh, yeah. leak that like ruined the world. It was terrifying. I remember Awful. that being terrifying. And I think also with Chernobyl, being the age that I was, I don't think I don't think at the time I understood how horrible it was. And right. it honestly wasn't until that miniseries. <laughs> I know. But I, I watched know. and I was like, oh, when you actually think about it, this was incredibly horrific. And, and terrifying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, So we're in <laughs> high school in the 80s. And I feel like, you know, in, in the canon of pop culture, 80s high school is kind of like peak high school. That's exactly. when we get all of the amazing high school movies. This is John Hughes Central. Yes. Yes. So I need to know, was your high school experience like a John Hughes movie? Th that motherfucker <laughs> gave everyone a bad idea <laughs> of what romance was, what yes. love was, all this. And so in the absence of any other guidance, that was my blueprint for what relationships were. Sh and uh, not, uh, unconsensual. <laughs> unconsensual. They'll come around. Yeah. Uh, you know, that kind of Just thing. Just stalk them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's how they know that you love them. Wear them down. <laughs> yes, exactly. Gaslight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let them know that, you're, that they are ruining your life <laughs> by not being in love with you. Were you like a lovesick teen? <sighs> what were you like as a teenager? I was. Who were you in high school? Did you have a click? What was your high school like? Tell me what was going on. I would say it definitely was a lovesick pest. I love um, that. Most of my, the majority of my high school love drama centered around one person <gasps> who was a friend of mine. And then one day we kissed out of nowhere. How old were became, you when you kissed? We were juniors in high school. Yeah, I think we were juniors in high school. Was that your first kiss? No, I had my first kiss the year before or earlier that same year. I can't remember. My first girlfriend. Um, when but was she was not the school. love. She was not the love. No, she was wonderful though. She's Nancy. a good place filler. <laughs> <laughs> she got me started. Um, we and all then, need the first one. Exactly. Exactly. I still remember how that felt though. That first kiss. What would it feel like? It was. I. I remember how. It was a sensation that I'd never felt before. Where were you? I was. We were. Behind, we were sitting on the back bumper of her car. Love. That is very 80s yes, high school. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And she initiated it. I don't know when I ever would have gotten around to attempting that. Right. I it, Like, it was all I wanted, but I was uh, terrified of everything. Well, that tension. Yeah. That, like, mounting tension that only exists when you're a teenager. Yeah. Like, it does not, it simply cannot exist at any other point in your life because you become jaded and bitter and well, yeah. everything else. What, I try to remember that when I get anxious about something now. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, at least it's not that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the worst. The absolute worst. Was it like a tonguey kiss? Was it a make out? Or oh, was it just... yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, look. So first it was very tender and yeah. then the tongues got involved. It was exciting. And then it became erotic. Yeah, it became... Yeah. He became erotic. That's yeah. gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so then you became lovesick over your friend. Yes, yes, yes. Who yes. you were in love with through all of high school. Yeah, uh, the second half of high school. First year, here, here was my pattern. Yeah, let's see, okay. the, let's, see, let's see the pattern. So I had a crush on the same girl from sixth grade on. This was my first big crush, okay. right? And then freshman year of high school, shifted that to this other girl. <laughs> She was my crush for a year. Okay. Sophomore year, uh, same crush from last year, shifted into a new one for the second half of sophomore year. Okay. Uh, between sophomore and junior year, I grew to my maximum height. Okay, um, that's huge. That's my, huge. Got my first decent haircut. Love that. And um, and so then had a had my first girlfriend, Nancy, who was a year older. She was in the class above me. Hot. Um, very hot. 
Yeah. She knew what she was doing. She, oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then after we broke up, uh, and I believe I ended that, which is astonishing to me. <laughs> That's when hi, when I hear like high school boys dumping their girlfriends, yeah. I'm like, wow, you really must be confident. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my cousin who's what now she's not in high school anymore she's in college yeah. but when she was in high school and she would like talk about boys I would be like these little fuckers mm -hmm. should be so indebted and grateful to you yeah. that you are even indulging them 100%. at all 100% like I have sacri I should have a fucking like purple heart for the <laughs> shit that I've done with High school, my high school boyfriend. Absolutely, absolutely. That was an act of service. Yeah. When I broke up with her, it was almost like she found it amusing. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the gall of it. Because I remember she took it, she took it very well and she was very sweet about it. And it was later when I thought about it, I was like, oh, I just, I probably beat her by a day. Yeah, yeah. She's laughing to herself because she was yeah. like, oh, I was going to do this yeah, for yeah, you. Yeah. I was going to do this after lunch. I'll let you have this one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So- <laughs> well, like, what was your vibe like in high school? Were you like, were, were there cliques? Were there jocks? Was there, were, yeah, was there... there were cliques. I was, I was a class clown, as as is not surprising. Um, and I was, I, I, in my memory, I was fairly well liked by everybody. Um, I had my own little group of friends. Um, there was like, um, uh, I would say five, six of us that were really tight, um, boys and girls, um, and. That was my group. That was my group. I had a best friend um, who was, uh, you know, we did everything together. Um, I saw him years later, like uh, a handful of years ago back in Philly. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me stories of things that I just had no memory of. Love I didn't when that remember happens. them at all. And I started to feel bad. And I started to just lie and say, yes, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Because... I just felt weirdly guilty and, but also really astonished that I couldn't remember any of these things oh. that sounded like me. You know yeah. what I mean? It definitely like, I, 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 I cannot say that was not me and that you're mistaken. Like this right. is clearly me. Right. Um, but it was weird to have just, just to have deleted that from the hard drive, you know. By the way, not to to my own horn, but I did graduate high school a few years after you and- I, by the way, can't remember anything myself. And yeah. like, I only, my, I graduated high school like 15 years ago, 16 yeah. years ago, something like that. And genuinely, I cannot remember. I, a friend of mine who's my only friend that I went to high school with mm -hmm. <laughs> that remains, mm -hmm. truly brought up a memory this, to me this past weekend. And I was like, what? And he was like, I remember you would tell everyone <laughs> It's so dark. I would tell everyone I was on birth control and like that my boyfriend like would come inside of me. And I was like, that is so crazy. You said this about your friend. No, I said this about, about myself yourself. to my friend. And I was like, what? I was like disgusted at myself. You, like, was that true? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my mom was smart. And my mom was like, you need to go on birth control. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. No, it is. We do black out chunks of high school. We just don't remember. I think it's also if you move away because you don't have those reminders Correct. of places that you see often and, you know, that kind of thing. And... Like when I when I go home now, if I walk down certain streets, it absolutely will trigger memories. Yeah, I bet if I went to the site of my old, if I if I if I if I had ever gone back to my old school and like walked around, I'm sure it would have like, and it's not like I don't remember anything, right? But I was astonished at how much I didn't remember. Yeah, yeah, well, especially considering I, I consider myself someone with a very good memory, um, and to just have it be. Not not even vaguely familiar was really wild. Yeah, not even like me. a speck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's yeah. it is it's jarring when yeah. that happens. It also it's like uh, when you've if you've ever gotten blackout drunk and then the next morning someone recounts what you've done. I think I've done that. I'm so <laughs> proud of you if you've never been blackout drunk. Oh no, drunk. I, several times. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> that was that was my. 20s. Oh, that was a joke. That was my twenty. Oh, okay, yeah. wow. I, it was. Ugh. Awful. Yeah. I mean, if you're not getting blackout drunk in your 20s, 
Are you even in your 20s? Exactly. You know, that's exactly. the, that's, and people that are listening are like, no, I'm actually running a multi million dollar business. <laughs> I actually didn't. But I can't imagine being sober in your 20s, like just raw dogging that. It's that time of life. I have friends that have been sober since they were like in their late teens. And I'm. Oh, because they, they partied then? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I have friends that were, had, you know, drug and drinking issues as like 14 year olds i know that's a shame because they used it all up too soon (laughs) yeah well i mean you know i remember and i don't know if there was this i i wonder like did you have that kid in your high school who would like drink at high school like at school oh i'm sure i'm sure and i i was but i was very sheltered um i I did not drink i didn't smoke i didn't have sex i was very were you a good student uh i was an okay student so you were straight edge and I, you were in just okay? Yeah. I, I excelled <laughs> at the things that I was interested in and math and science, terrible. Yeah. Um, I had to go to summer school for chemistry. Um, but everything else I just coasted. Yeah. You know, and like English, I did very well because right. I liked English. And you were interested in like reading yeah, and yeah, writing. Yeah. It was and... easier for me. Right. Um, anything that was easy, no problem. I did great. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I very much was... Um, very uh, 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 holier than thou about all that stuff. Um, and the kids, but it's also, it was all out of fear. And so the kids in, in school that did drink and smoke and everything, they were terrifying to me. They were terrifying to me. It's intimidating. Yeah. Especially you are pre-internet. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah, it's yeah. like you, everyone is literally... You're only basing it off of the experiences you are witnessing firsthand. Yeah, like there's no real way of research. Yeah. Yeah. yeah You're yeah. not going to like go to the library and no. look up like drunk person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do later today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do let me know what you find. Sure. <laughs> um, I want to know and then. I am going to ask you for, like, your quintessential high school, like, story moment, something that you carry with you. Absolutely. But I do need to know, as someone that was in your formative, like, teen years, sans cell phone, Mm -hmm. sans internet, Mm -hmm. like, do you feel – because sometimes I find myself having existential moments of being like, who am I? Like, Mm -hmm. is my brain just a – pudding pie of shit that I've absorbed from all of these fucking things. And like, I even feel like I, in high school, I didn't have social media, like social media wasn't a thing. So like, I still feel lucky that I, I still feel like I was pre Mm -hmm. that. But do you feel like you were able to cultivate a greater sense of self like, like, what, what is your feeling on that? Do you think that that's just like, it's the same for all of us, no matter what the circumstance? I think that is the human experience, and I think even without all of those things, uh, that age for me, though, that uh, you know, from uh, all four years of high school, there was so much anxiety, there was so much wondering uh, who I am, but without even being able to put it into those words, you know, but. Um, the, the scariness of the future, um, uh, coupled with the, the anxiety of the present and, you know, all these people, is this person going to bully me? Is this girl going to like me? Um, and then all the, th- the thoughts that I'm not having, which is like, I should leave her alone. Like, you know, right. I, this guy doesn't care about me, right. you know, like all these things that, that I, I was incapable of thinking, but I do remember the idea of identity was, uh, you know, it, it it all comes down to: Do people like me? Right. Am I lovable? Right. How do people feel about me? Right. And am I? Am, and, and the 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 question that you can't really put into words because it's so huge: Am I a worthwhile human being? Right. And you know, being going to a Catholic school, you know, a lot of that was sort of pushed back because of religion, um, where you the, like those thoughts were kind of a a luxury in a way that it was like, oh, you have time to think about this, you right. know. And but there was also a, a, another part of that was a lot of pleading to God, like, um, you know, please let me um, be okay tomorrow. Please let me stop feeling this way. Please let me whatever, you know. Um, 
I, I think that that, I just think nobody escapes it. I, I think if you could, you could take all the devices away tomorrow, and I think kids would still go through that. I think that's like really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> if you just think, I mean, the human condition is truly to just be loved. Like yeah. it's yeah, 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 and that desire, you know, it's it really is like ever present, yeah. and I think that yeah, I, when we are. 14 to 18 in high school, we don't have the scope or the ability to be more macro about yeah. our feelings because they're so persistent and sharp in mm -hmm. the moment. Were you, did you believe in God? Oh, yeah. Or I guess, do you believe in God? I, I don't anymore, but I was very devout at the yeah. time. I, I, I prayed every day. I went to mass every Sunday. You know, I thought about God all the time. Really? And a lot of that was... I would say 90% of that was fear and self-loathing. Right. You know, it was like, I'm not, I'm failing. I'm not doing, I'm not, do, I'm failing as a person. I'm not doing good enough. I'm not a good enough human being. Um, but then there was also, there was comfort in that. You know, there was, there was comfort in the idea that there's some kind of plan and somebody's watching over all of this. And, you know, I believed in heaven. I believed in all of it. Um, that's intense. Yeah, it's it's very intense. And I, was, I don't miss that intensity because it was it was overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, every guest that I've had on this show that has grown up really religious or has gone to a religious school or really uh, bought into specifically Catholicism, yeah. like, I don't I I feel so grateful that I, when I was like, 10, I was like, there is no God, you know, yeah. and I was now, if anything, I've become more spiritual and more mm -hmm. believing in a higher power, yeah. whatever. But like, I kind of feel grateful that in high school I was fully an atheist because mm -hmm. it helped me like I don't I already felt so much shame and guilt yeah. just like existing in my teenage <laughs> skin yeah. that I don't know what that would have felt like uh, with the... <laughs> With the icing of yeah. a god that because it was post um, Vatican II, which mm. was when the church became new, right? And they shifted they shifted the uh, the the sort of psychology of it uh, from you know you're going to go to hell if you do this to you're going to make God sad, and <sighs> it it was so man when I would when I would do anything a little lie or much less like masturbate or something like that like the the shame that i felt like it's more than just guilt it's shame yeah where it's like i have done something wrong and i have let god down and all he does is love me and look, yeah. how, look how i treat him well that's like when a parent looks at you and is like i'm not mad at you yeah i'm disappointed in you yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like disappointing someone no nevertheless disappointing god is someone that like you can't see but that yeah. you just are in a knowing of yeah it's so out of control and it's so intense it's too much oh my god masturbating and then feeling shame after that that took forever to for that to go away even after i stopped believing in god i still think there are people that masturbate and like still feel shame sure because yeah. it's so embedded. Yeah. I stupid. Would masturbate and I it's would great. I would be like <laughs> I remember masturbating and being like I know boys do this but do girls do this? Right. And then I would be like I'm just like a freaky girl. Yeah. Like, you're the only one. yeah. <laughs> because there is something so isolating about girl, about female masturbation. Yeah. And there's still a huge stigma around it. I was it. probably in my 20s before that idea even occurred to me. <laughs> That women masturbated. Or that they could. That they could. That they could. Yeah. And that they did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it changes how you look at the whole world. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Things start to unravel. Yeah. Um, we're going to go to a quick break, and no. then we're going to be right back. A break. And we are back. Hi. Um, did you wear uniforms? Uh, the girls wore uniforms. Like they, little skirts? Like a single, like a, a jumper sort of thing. Okay, cute. Um, and the big scandal, of course, is they would hem them too high. Uh, Some of the girls would, they would wait till they got to school and then like hem them up in the bathroom. Really? Or something, yeah. I love that. It was exciting to watch. Of course, 
my little repressed self yeah. loved watching a girl like get reprimanded for it. First would of all, would the they thing- need to get on their knees and then do the hand thing? No, they they stopped doing that stuff by the time I got to high school. I went to a high school where they would do that. What? I went to a boarding school where they would oh, like board, boarding school. All yeah, bets all bets are off. All bets are off. <laughs> yeah, and like I went to boarding That's school like where international they would, waters. Where they would tie prepare. our hands behind yeah, our back and make us eat lunch. That's no, insane. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I believed it. I yeah. would have believed it. No, they they had stopped doing like the the corporal punishment thing. Yeah, and it was you would just get demerits or whatever. Right, but. The girls would like you. They would try. They would try not to smile. And I thought, like, they're so fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, because they would be like stern face, micro mini jumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love yeah. that. And you could see that they were trying not to smile. I love as that. they were being yelled at by some nun or whatever. That's so. That that is hot. Yeah. Good yeah, for yeah, those yeah. girls. I judge them, and also I lusted after them. <laughs> yes. Yes. You 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 hated you loved. I was a classic like movie <laughs> movie religious person. You were. <laughs> yeah. That it's like I, of course I looked down my nose at these people. Were you like? Were you someone that was involved in a lot of extracurriculars? Like, were you on student council or anything like that? I was in student council for a year. I did, of course, the drama club. Yes, yes. Um, I uh bluffed my way onto the National Honor Society. <laughs> Absolutely. And you should. Had no business being there. I remember in my, I think it was senior year, where I got into the pictures of other people's groups. Uh, <laughs> when they would, when I would see that they were taking a picture for a group, I You're would like, like sneak in there and just stand in the back. <laughs> that feels like really against your moral code as a religious, kind of like the was, religious person. person. You were. person, You yeah. were. What, ki- what kind of music were you listening to? Um, I was listening to pretty much whatever was on the radio, okay. like top 40. Mm-hmm. But I would say maybe junior year into senior year, that's when I discovered the Beatles and got into the Beatles. Love um, the house I grew up in, my um, sisters were older. It was three girls, then three boys. I'm the middle boy. And my sisters would have been listening to like the music of the 70s, like whatever was on the radio then. Um, and my parents, because they were like greatest generation – they would listen to – there was always uh, – uh, in the kitchen we had a little radio and there would be big band music mm. playing, Sinatra, stuff like that. Um, so I grew up with an appreciation for for all that stuff. Uh, but the Beatles was like a huge thing for me when I when I got into them. What was your favorite album? My favorite album was the White Album. Oh, really? Yeah. I love the White Album. I love the White Album. I don't know. That one, for some, what, it really spoke to me emotionally – I feel like it is maybe one of their more emotional albums. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a big Sgt. Pepper's head. Sure. Because it was great. I loved the album artwork. A- a- I would fucking, <laughs> I had it on vinyl. Yes. I would stare at it. I had my oh, mom's vinyl and I loved it. I was like a teen that really like lusted for another time. Like I went through yeah, phases yeah, yeah. of being like, especially like in middle school and Early in high school, mm. I was like classic rock. I was like Zeppelin, yeah. like the Beatles, Jimi Hendrix, like, and then I got into like Iggy Pop and like all of that stuff. But I really identified as yeah. someone that was born in the wrong generation. <laughs> like I was not supposed to be. Do you there. still feel that way? <sighs> Sometimes I'm like. If only I could just, oh no, this is, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't say this on this podcast. <laughs> I cannot imagine. Sometimes I'm like, sometimes in this business, uh-huh. in the business of entertainment, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes I'm like, God damn it. I'm like, if it was only like the 80s, yeah. I would have been such a classic yeah, yeah, yeah. bitch. I would have <laughs> been like the perfect castable, like blonde. Mm. Like bodacious bitch, you, you know, like on Dynasty or something. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would have been on Dynasty. I could have had like a Suzanne Summers thing. I could have had like a workout <laughs> thing. I could then be like, you know, reinventing my career right now. Exactly. I could be like doing a Gene Smart situation. Yeah. Like, you know, I, I I think that sometimes there are certain aspects of my personality that would be better suited mm-hmm. for uh, being an adulthood in a different time, as right. I felt being a teenager at a different time would have been better suited. Yeah. I think I I I think I get really overwhelmed by social media mm-hmm. and I constantly am just like fucking a like mm-hmm. what I would do to just have a fucking landline. Yeah. 
and a fax machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to not feel like you, like you, you know, you don't really like post that much on social. You're not really like building out that yeah. like avenue for yourself. It's like exactly. fuck off. Yeah. You know, like I don't want to like girl eating pizza. Like I don't want to like you know I. It's like I don't want to do that. Like I want to like make. <laughs> art you know and and I wish that I was also sorry now we're like talking about me I was just saying I wish we were also at a time when like money for making mm-hmm. movies yeah was like how it once was which felt kind of like funny money where everyone was like oh you want uh 10 million bucks to make oh, weekend yeah. at Bernie's yeah, like yeah, yeah. here you go people I feel bad for people that are coming up in this business today I mean never as much as I feel bad for myself but <laughs> Because you, I, you wouldn't. They wouldn't believe the things that used to happen, like things like yeah. holding deals, where if you were some dumb fucking comic, yeah, they'd be like, people are talking about you. We're gonna give you fifty thousand yeah. dollars just so nobody else can put you on a TV show. Sure, and then we'll figure out if we want to do something with yeah. you. Yeah, and it's like that does. That's what? insane. Yeah. Well, of course. I mean, I'm disappointed they stopped doing that. I know. But it makes sense. They should They should, they should never should... have been doing that. But now it's kind of like, now it's kind of like, well, it doesn't really matter mm-hmm. if you're talented. Yeah. Now a lot of a lot of the time people are like, well, you just got to be like relevant and like X, Y, and Z. Now yeah. everyone needs to be like a multi-hyphenate or some shit like that. And yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. you know, why can't, why can't we, we all just. They're still paying attention to like. The amount of followers somebody has, or whatever, and it's like that—that that has never translated. No. Into success for anybody. Has I, it? I, no. If any, if anything, you know, you see someone that potentially has a huge following that gets an opportunity, and you're kind of like, mm, maybe that shouldn't have been them. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, maybe this, maybe this would have been better if you went with someone that had like a hundred followers, or maybe no <laughs> social media at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like good at good at the craft. Yeah. I, I also just whatever. This is a whole other. This is this is not <laughs> even about high school anymore. It's so we're we're What's just, more just, high school than show business. I mean, <laughs> d- truly, the I try to explain this to my pedestrian friends, mm-hmm. my civilians. Yeah. Um, co- specifically, comedy is high school. Yeah. You're in classes of comics. It's structured the same way. Yeah. You need to like. I think it's been greatly broken down mm-hmm. since uh TikTok and all of this shit. Yeah. But like especially with like your generation of comics and below and above, but really you're kind of the first age demo of comics where I feel like more women were more broadly accepted yeah. into comedy. I, when I started, there was a big um a big comedy boom. I started not long after high school. Yeah. And comedy was everywhere. Did it you was, go to college? Uh for a little bit. Well, yeah. whatever. I went to Temple University and oh. I dropped out after a semester. But and then because and then I started, started doing open mics yeah. and then I was like, I don't, I don't know why I'm here. Right. Um, I mean, it's good that you at least had the that urge yeah. to be like, this is potentially a waste of money and yeah, a waste yeah, yeah. of time. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I was, I started, it, I like gradually dropped out where I would go to the campus, but I wouldn't go to classes. Yeah, you just like, just, like check hang in. Out. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was scared to tell my parents. Right. And then I had to tell them and they were like, yeah, whatever. It's interesting that you say that you were a class clown in high school, yet you were so religious and judgmental. (laughs) How does that work? I mean, uh, you know, I contain multitudes, I guess. (laughs) You'd like do an impression and you'd be like, guess who I am? And they'd be like, who? And you'd be like, St. Christopher. No. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, but okay. So my household was not, we were not religious in that way. Right. Like I believed in God. Right. It was all real to me, but we were not like I, my, my best friend, they had like religious iconography mm. in their house and stuff like that. They were very churchy. Right. And we were, we were definitely Catholic. The family went to mass and everything. We said grace before meals, but in the house, it was like it wasn't all about God. It was it was about how do we deal with what's happening right here, right now. Because right. my mom was super burnout, and you know was uh, uh, angry a lot of the time, and um, you know it wasn't like God wasn't referenced casually casually in the way that uh, 
super religious people mention God at every turn. Right. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. Um, so if something good happened, it wasn't like, oh, God has blessed you right, or whatever. Right. It's like, congratulations. Yes. You know, we were normal in that way. So I was, I was a, a big entertainment fan. I consumed everything, comedy, everything comedy. Loved it. Um, who was your, who was your king? Uh, Steve Martin. Mm. Um, and SCTV were like the two yeah. biggest things to me. Those were like the two biggest comedy things to me. Um, but I love sitcoms. I loved watching The Tonight Show. Like yeah. any, anything like that, really any talk show, just like showbiz. I loved it. It's, I it's loved intoxicating. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you, because you know, I love talking about the biz. And when we finish this, I'm going to keep talking to you about the biz. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, but if you had to think to yourself like as a story that kind of like encapsulates or something that's just been like crystallized as like high school <laughs> you, mm-hmm. what would that story, what would that, what would one of those moments be? This is a story that I don't think I've ever really told many people because it is so mortifying. Oh, I love it. I love it already. And, and shitty. Okay. So this friend of mine that I was in love with, we sort of dated, but she also was dating this other guy who was, who went to our same school, was a year ahead of us. And so our senior year was very fraught. I knew she was dating this other guy. I have to, when I look back at it, be like, fucking good for her, man. She like... She had fun with me. She had fun with him. She set her boundaries like this is what it is and, you know, take it or leave it. And I I, I marvel at that now. And then after after high school, she continued to like date other people while still dating this guy, <laughs> you know, just to just to have the experience. Yeah. Like she wasn't going to. And they ended up married. But Whoa. she still. Yeah. 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 But she she come by it honest. Like she went right. out and saw, you know, what she needed to see and was like, yeah, okay, I'm still gonna marry this dude. They're yeah. happily married, Great. kids, everything. Yeah. Um, but I'm I I'm like retroactively so impressed by her by doing like this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. And if you don't like it, that's too bad. Yeah. Um, but that was a very hard if you don't like it, that's too bad was an impossible thing for me to hear. Absolutely. So for our scene this ha- okay. The year before, yes, my girlfriend. I was a, I, uh, my girlfriend was a senior. I was a junior. Yes. When it came time for her senior prom, she took another guy. <gasps> it was like her an old boyfriend of hers that she. Had, this is like a kind of thing that only happens in high school because she had promised him years before. Uh, <laughs> what a flop! Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're you haven't dumped her yet. No, 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 no. Because this is the one that you dumped. Yes. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is the one that you kissed on the back on the yes. bumper first of her kiss, car. Yes, first kiss. Yes, first kiss, Nancy, as I call her. Okay, first kiss, Nancy. <laughs> FKN. Yes. So, uh, but I ended up. But then uh, someone else in the senior class asked me to be their date to the prom. Okay. So I got to go anyway and see her dance with this other fucking guy. <laughs> you know, you're you're literally like I'm her boyfriend. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so then the next year. I'm like, senior prom, well, obviously, she and I are going to go. We're both seniors. Yeah. This is our prom. Yes. I know she's dating this other guy, but he doesn't go to the school anymore. Sure. She took him to the senior prom. No. And she told me she was going to. And I I tried my hardest to make her miserable over this. And then I secretly asked somebody else. I told her I was not going to go. And I wasn't going to go. It was her fault. That I was missing out on this. Love that. And then I showed up with this other girl and who was just a friend of mine. Right. Yeah. And I really thought this is going to go down like the movies. Yep. <laughs> She's going to see you with another girl, become overwhelmed yes. with jealousy and anger, realize she made a huge mistake. Yeah. yeah, yeah should yeah. dump that guy. We're going to leave the prom together. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you... That did not happen. <laughs> um, I tried, like I confronted her at the prom, tried so hard to ruin it for her, was unsuccessful. I think she had a great time. That's She, 
She was like, now, you know, years and years and years later, she's yeah. like, wait, you were at that prom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, don't remember anything else about it. Just rem- <laughs> Those are the two things I remember. How did I fill the time? And I remember going home in the car uh, with my date and like, what a horrible night that was for her too. Yeah. Like she wasn't, she wasn't romantically interested in me at all, but she must have been like, I thought this was going to be fun. Like, yeah, like you weren't even having here? fun. Yeah. Just distracted yeah, the yeah, whole yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, as someone that got uninvited from their senior prom. By whom? The my school? boyfriend at the, oh, time. At the no, time. No, no. Mm-hmm. My boyfriend at the time was sh- a shitty, shitty boyfriend mm-hmm. because of some stupid fucking drama. Uninvited me day of. Uninvited me to prom. Day, so you had a dress. Oh yeah. Ticket like did you buy a ticket? Is it one of those things? No, it was. I think that our prom was free. Mm-hmm. I think I don't know. Right. But I had a Matthew Williamson ombre yellow to blue cap sleeve dress. Yellow to blue. Wow. My arms looked good enough to wear a cap sleeve. And I never got to wear the cap sleeve. And I gave it to a coworker of mine who was like going to an event. She was like, Do you have a dress I could borrow? I was like, I was like, take this. Like dramatically. I was like, I'm not I'm never using this dress, you know? <laughs> but I wish I did what you did. Mm-hmm. I wish oh, that no! I did what you did. Yes. Well, in this case, it would be justified. Yeah. In my well, case, it was not justified. I gotta say, I don't know. It's a little gray to me in your case because I, I know that I you st- knew. That I still am shocked that it was <laughs> our prom and she took this other guy. I'm shocked too. It was like you went to his prom. Also, you know, again, this is when you're a teenager and you're yeah. seeing things so, uh, you know, tiny. Absolutely. She doesn't have the scope to be like, prom doesn't mean shit. Like prom is Man, just like I just take me. If I had been one of those kids that was like the prom is stupid. Yeah, I thought I, I was wish. one of those kids, and I was not. You right. know, because I too am such a sucker yeah. for entertainment. Mm-hmm. So of course I wanted my my life to be a teen movie, yeah. as you wanted your prom to be like how it works out in the movie. It's movies. so mean that they don't that they let kids get away with. Building this shit up. Yeah. And because they've all been through it. Yeah. Why are the adults not the adults are like supervising me like <laughs> like watching. Just cancel them. Evil. Don't have them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like we're gonna do you all a favor. No events, no yeah, fun. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> if it's not fun for everybody, it's not fun for anybody. There should be this is this is not um what I'm saying is a joke, but there should be like a day where like everyone is mandated to have their first kiss. Where like they mandate like developmental things in your teenage life right. to just rid yourself of all of the anxiety. If I if that had happened where it was like, we're okay, we're gonna practice kissing. Yeah. And so line up everybody. Yeah. That's my just dy- <laughs> that's my dystopian movie that I'm going to write. That's my like I would have loved it. I well, like, is this what we're gonna do? Yeah, I- it's coming it's coming out in twenty twenty three. It's gonna be a spin off <laughs> of Dune and it's gonna star The Rock. It's gonna so. be a spin off of Dune. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, knock, knock, knock. Oh, my goodness. Is that a knock on the door I hear? <laughs> yes, it is. Where are we? We are in the high school guidance counselor's office. Oh, dear. And guess what? I'm your high school guidance counselor. Yeah. Um, in this segment of the pod, I give you an opportunity to get something off your chest that's been weighing on you, an apology, a fuck you, anything that's been gnawing at your um, moral, emotional door for the past, you know, uh, 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. So this is your time to release it. And then after you release it, you never have to think about it again. All right. I'm going to say, well, if only that were true. (laughs) Uh, I do want to apologize to all, all the women I've mentioned so far (laughs) (laughs) and the countless others that I, you know, made that I that I an annoyed and and bothered mm. um, as I was trying to uh, as I was trying to figure myself out while thinking I had already had myself all figured out. Um, and I, you know, when you grow up thinking and I'm, I know a lot of men have this experience where they thought they were good guys mm. and they thought they were like they thought they were respectful and. You know, because you're not like some because you're not a date rapist and you're not 
like, uh, you know, somebody that that uh, treats women cruelly or whatever, it doesn't necessarily mean that you were uh, great. Yeah. And, you know, I. I think I objectified women in a way that I didn't realize I I was objectifying them because I wouldn't. It's not just about you see a woman and you see her as a, a, a vessel for sex. It is reducing someone's essence to, I need you to love me. And you're not really seeing the person and who they are as a human being. When I think about some of the women that I had crushes on over the years before I like started going to therapy and figuring things out, it was just like, what did I like about that person? I yeah. just thought they were attractive and I wanted them and 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 I made them laugh. And so I, I, I was finding worth. I was trying to find worth in the way they looked and how they reacted to me um, to prove something to myself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I wish I'd had the tools, you know, I wish I, I wish I'd, I wish I'd gotten to where I am now sooner. Um, because I would have saved myself and a lot of other people, a lot of trouble. From, from your mouth to any <laughs> young man's ears, honey. Yeah. I, I think that what a, refreshing that just healed me hearing someone be <laughs> like seriously because I think it is hard um when you are a teenage girl and you uh, you know that yeah like you're not being sexually assaulted you're not being sexually abused you're not being necessarily physically abused but like emotional abuse is so rampant yeah. and real yeah. and something that I think, you know, certainly I felt more girls dealing with it when I was in high school. Mm -hmm. I'm sure everyone deals with it more frequently now, but like you feel so crazy mm -hmm. because like you said, you're like, but he's a good guy. Like he's he's a good person. Mm -hmm. Like why do I feel X, Y, and Z? And like maybe it's me and it feels so like reflected back onto you. Yeah. And it becomes really confusing mm -hmm. because it's like you can feel really fucking bad about yourself. Yeah. And you are carrying the weight. Yeah, when like and it and it comes from a really innocent place. It comes from, you know, wanting to be loved and accepted because of something that's missing in yourself, of course. Like yeah. And it's also it's a time in life when everything is so confusing. Your body is going bananas nuts. and, you know, you don't you just and you you also can't imagine the future. No. You're just like this is the way it's always going to yes. be. This is my world right now and it always will be. 100%. If this person doesn't love me. Yeah. It's and my over. world is done. Yeah. Everything is so huge, huge, yeah. huge and big. So to make somebody the single-minded focus of your attention. Yeah. When they didn't ask for it, they have nothing to do with it, you know. Yeah. And it's like. And when they don't give back to you what you want, yeah. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. it just is like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. This is kind of, you know, this is kind of a one-two punch. If you could go back in time and give your your high school self any oh. advice, what would it be? The the big problem, of course, is whenever people did try to give me advice, I, I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. But it's also adults give bad advice in that way when they say things like, years from now, you're, you're going right. to laugh that you cared about this. And it's like, that doesn't help me right now. Yeah, and also I'm like, are you so sure about that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's true, but this is my entire life right now. Right. So what else you got? That was always the advice my mom would give me. Yeah. My mom would always just say to me, they're all lemmings running off the same cliff. And I would say, okay. Dang. But like, I kind of want to run off the cliff too. Yeah, and they're exactly. not letting me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the only person left at the edge of the cliff? Yeah. I'm like, so what, so what yeah. am I, you're just walking the other direction? Yeah, yeah, Hoping yeah. someone sees me? <laughs> I think if I, if I could tell my younger self something, and maybe I would listen if my older self appeared, <laughs> I would say, relax. Mm. Just relax. I was so wound up. Everything was life or death. It was... It was too much. Yeah. It was too much. Stressful. That and the God on top of it. And, and you know. Chernobyl. <laughs> As I've established, Chernobyl, not that big a deal. <laughs> it is too much. <laughs> too much. Uh, but if I could just, if I could figure out a way 
to get myself to be in the present more and uh, uh, just not worry about stuff. But I just don't know how that's possible. Yeah. I just don't know how it's possible. Oh, wait, we have a we have a classmates corner. I didn't want to remind you, but yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> we have classmates. So corner. this is the section in my guidance counselor moment. You know, I'm going back into guidance counselor mode mm-hmm. where a classmate, a listener of the pod, writes in with something they would like to oh, get dear. off their chest. Oh, dear. And they're always very good. <laughs> um, so, Tevi, please take it away. Great. Today we have Siobhan saying, hey, Greta, love the pod and also a fan of your character on Los Spookies. I thought I'd share a sick and twisted event that my high school used to put on that the pod has mentioned the danger because of the pod has mentioned the dangers of teen driving more than a few times. The program is a two day event called Every 15 Minutes, and it's basically a crazy ass mock DUI theater performance. Students are chosen to die in a DUI and we're all forced to gather around a fake car crash scene on campus. The fire department, police station and ambulance are there. Even the students' parents are there to act out this DUI death scenario. What? <laughs> the students who caused the crash are oh. arrested. Oh, the, the, oh the, my the, God. By <laughs> I, I guess. The students that die are kept overnight in a hotel and not allowed to communicate with friends or family to simulate so that people can feel like they are actually gone and dead. On day two of the program, the dead students go to class while dressed up in a dead person face mask makeup. What? There's also one person who dresses up in a full Grim Reaper costume with a mask and sick with a mask and sickle. They're not allowed to talk to anyone and they have to keep up the act that they're dead. It concludes with an assembly where obituaries are read for the dead students and there's a talk about the dangers of drinking and driving. On day three, the students are back and everything is normal again. (laughs) Thinking back on it, this scenario is truly wild and did absolutely nothing to deter drinking and driving. At the time, most students were bummed that they weren't even picked to die. Have you ever heard of a program like this? I was just about to say. Absolutely. You want to be the one that dies. Because first of all, you want to hear that obituary. You of course everything (laughs) about it. (laughs) Spend the night in the hotel. Makeup. You walk around. Nobody talks to you like a weird. (laughs) Yeah, you get to be like you get to be like method (laughs) at school. Um, wait, how did she how did she wrap it up? She just asked. Have you guys ever heard of this? Can you speak to this <laughs> sure, experience? Sure haven't. Uh, sure haven't. I, I, there's only one thing that comes to mind, and it was when I was in elementary school. Um, fire safety was like a really big deal. <sighs> And I remember they would put us in a trailer that would simulate like what would happen if a fire was happening and they would make us, and it gave me so much anxiety. I can like, it makes me want to pee right now thinking about it. It, it, They would make us stop, drop and roll. Uh And then they would make us like get up and open a window to like jimmy our bodies out of it. It was terrifying. You had to climb out the window. Yes, and it was and it was awful. And I that that is the closest that I have to like weird sleep no more theater of yeah. trauma. But a three day immersive event. Yeah, your school. I. It's got to be a private school. That's got to be. That's some private school tomfoolery. Uh, can you imagine how much these kids made fun of this shit? Like they loved it every year. I mean, you, for, you absolutely want to die. And then for if sure. you don't get to die, you got to be that Grim Reaper. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely. Like, you know, you got. You know, it's always the tallest kid. Yeah. <laughs> It is. It's always the tallest kid. It's always kid. the tallest kid yeah. that's like really good at drawing that yeah, like yeah, doesn't yeah. talk that much that yeah. can't actually play a sport. It's like in my school it would be the kid who could grow a beard would yeah. be Jesus in the passion play. Abs- I mean, yeah. I know who would be the Grim Reaper in my school <laughs> and he would have been great. It would have been awesome. Yeah. Oh, to see that giant figure. The kid who would have been the Grim Reaper in my school uh would create really elaborate Halloween costumes every year. Really? Would be a, a life-size ear of corn, would be a life-size um, fire hydrant. Like, mm. they were amazing. So I feel like he would really have committed to being the Grim Absolutely. Reaper. Maybe some light-up eyes. Yes. Like, in the, in the darkness of the hood. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm really sorry that your school traumatized you like that. I really hope you did get to die, though. I mean, I don't think she did get to die. I think she would have mentioned if she got to die. I think so. Um, to me, what's terrible about that is it's not only traumatizing, mm-hmm. um, but then it's also, of course, popularity hierarchies at play. Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. Because if it's only it's it's one class, they do it once a year. Yeah. Um, it has to be 
Like, this is not an everybody gets a turn scenario. No, no. Um, it's got to be the most popular kids. Did you drive in high school? I didn't get my driver's license till I was 40 years old. What? Yeah. <laughs> what? I was terrified of it. That is loco. Yeah. And then I moved to New York for a job. Okay. Didn't need it. When I came back, the first time like I had to call a cab to go somewhere, it was like a switch flipped in my brain. I was like, I, I, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Hired a, I got it. I went to a driving school, got a driving instructor. I said, I'm going to do this for as long as I'll take as many lessons until I feel like I can do it. I took about, I think, like a couple weeks of lessons, something like that, where I felt like, okay, I can go for the test now. Wow. Went for the test, passed it on the first try. Aces. Love it. Love driving. And now you're cruising in your car. I'm cruising in my car. I love that. What kind of a car you drive? I have a Mini Cooper. I love it. I drove a Mini Cooper. The, when they first re-released them. Oh, wow. Like, wow. The first bout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My parents got a Mini Cooper. They stupidly let me drive it. It was a soft top. And Ooh. I used to hotbox the fuck out of that car in high school. <laughs> and then I would open. I would be like driving. We'd hotbox it. And then talk about dangers of driving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I would just like open the roof. And Absolutely. it was it was great. Beautiful. I mean, you can hotbox the Mini Cooper in like one second. Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Um, okay, now you know what my final my final question of the pod. Did you have a senior superlative? Or was was that not a thing in your head? It school? was. I was I I was class clown. We love it. The only one that's not a most. Yeah. Um, it's just most like, class clown. Yeah, most class clown. <laughs> most annoying. Most annoying class clown. <laughs> most annoying class clown who believes in God. Oh, and star of the stage. Okay. Yeah. I will say there's something to these teens because these teens see <laughs> something they do. Like, you know, the fact that so many people on this show that have come on the show that are very successful mm -hmm. have all been like star of the stage, mm -hmm. most likely to be famous, most likely to be a comedian. And I'm just like, OK, they were all on to something. I, th I mean, I think most of us that to do this kind of thing, I think you definitely find the outlet for it as early as you possibly can. Yeah. Like if it's presented to you like, oh, wow, I can I can get on stage and act and yeah. put on costumes and shit like that. I think that most of us will do that. Yeah. I think it's I think it's more rare the people that are a little it's a little too much for them then and then they get into it later in life. Um, but, yeah, I was. Uh, I, I just, it was always a part of me. I mean, in, in having this conversation with you, I think, I think of that kid, I, I guess I always assume it's less who I am now, uh, 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 than, than I would think. But I think after, after having this conversation, I think there is more of that kid in me now than I realized mm. that he's with me a lot more. And, you know, it's like self-love is a very weird concept to me. Mm -hmm. I was not something I was brought up with. And so to try to make that happen, it's like I have to really make an effort yeah. to say like, hey, you're okay. You know, you're doing the best you can and you're you're a good person. Like you're oh. not a bad guy. And I always think of a story that a friend of mine told me about that I relate to so hard. She was in therapy and she said she said, you know, one day I was in therapy and my therapist said, um, what would you say to to little Amy if you could talk to her now? And my friend said, thanks a fucking lot. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I totally get that. Yeah. I totally get that. But it's like I want to look back on him and say, he didn't know any – he didn't know. He didn't know any better. Yeah. I mean, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't. He was doing the absolute best he, he could. He really didn't know any better. Yeah. You got to have compassion for that yeah. that young chap. Yeah. You know? I feel that way about myself. I was like, "Damn, you were really trying to just yeah. ha manage <laughs> exactly. and handle." Yeah. You know, like yeah. The shit that they don't tell us is mind-boggling. Yeah. It's mind-boggling. And the things that we really need to learn early on not even, uh, not even talking about like finance stuff. You oh, know what I, I mean? mean, I there's I so much stuff, but relationship things, how to deal with each other, how to be respectful, what that means. Even if they're gonna fucking laugh at it, do it anyway. There you needs know what to I mean? be a class on interpersonal communication. Yeah, absolutely. And there needs to be a class on finance and taxes. <laughs> like one hundred percent. 
That's it. Yeah. That, that's that's it. cool. That's it. Nothing else. You can jettison. Who cares about history? Yeah. Get rid of it. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know what? Guess what? I learned all about the French Revolution two weeks ago from my yeah. friend Cam. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot all about it. We have podcasts yeah, now. Yeah, we have podcasts. You we have friends. You don't need to teach yeah, history anymore. No, we don't. Because guess what? I'm not listening. I'm That's not listening. Right. I don't right. know. <laughs> Well, on that note, <laughs> thank you so much. It's such Absolutely. an honor, such a fan, it, such, I'm a, a fan such of a you. pleasure it's, it's to have you to on the you. show. Thank you very much for having me. I mean, you kind of are like the god of podcasting, <laughs> so I don't need to tell everyone where to find you because you essentially invented the craft. I'll still be there. <laughs> You'll still be there. Where, where do you think I am? That's where I am. <laughs> You'll find me. <laughs> um, thank you so much for listening. As always, only give me positive reviews and five stars. I just, Correct. I'm too sensitive and negativity really, Why really affects it? me. Uh, yeah. Life is too short. People leaving like one star reviews for podcasts, it's not like they're doing some scholarly deep dive. Yeah. Honey, I'm not writing a science article. Like I'm not like yeah. a published like PhD person giving you false information That's about right. chemotherapy treatments. Yeah. I'm I'm having having jokes about cum and masturbation yeah. with my friends. Um so there's that. Um and also if you have something that happened to you in high school that you want to get off your chest, please email us at SeniorSuperlativesPod at gmail.com with the little uh, subject line Classmates Corner, and you will have Tevi uh, read it out loud, and then you'll have me and my guests react. And that's just I think a this wonderful episode proved that will happen. Yeah, I think it will. If you've listened this far... You see how it goes. And guess what? Even if I forget, we're going to get that official sign that <laughs> says producer's right. note. Producer note. And then we're going to know that we need to do it. Um, all right. Well, as I say every week, stay cool, never change. Until next time, ciao. That was a HeadGum Podcast. <laughs>